my name is uh, Shimon Andrzejewski, and I will, together with, uh, with uh, Mr. Roman Jurard, I will uh, tell you today something more about citizen science, the, the, the one of the aspects of the open science. Uh, first, maybe I will say a few words about the for EU uh, project, for EU Plus project. It is a transnational strategic uh, university association. And its aim is to strengthen European vision of deepening uh, cooperation and mutual enrichment in research and teaching. Open science is an integral part of this. So, uh, of, of course, also citizen science as a part of open science. Of course, a bit autonomous, but still a part of the open science uh, is, is, is a part. So, so uh, these, these, uh, these webinars is, uh, are uh, some kind of uh, educational part uh, that can uh, that one that uh, that makes uh, close to your uh, idea about uh, about open science. So first, uh, can I? Uh, I want to check, of course, if if it's if I'm uh, if everyone hear me, uh, good. It's it's okay. So it's okay. So, okay, so then I will start uh, with my presentation. First, maybe I will introduce myself. Uh, my name is Szymon Andrzejewski. Uh, I come from Poland. Uh, I am, uh, uh, actually, I'm, I'm uh, uh, in, an, an employer of uh, uh, often uh, uh, University of Warsaw. And, uh, inter uh, and directly an interdisciplinary uh, center of, of, uh, of uh, computing at the uh, University of Warsaw. Uh, I'm, uh, at the, I'm, uh, uh, I work at the project University of uh, University, uh, I work on the project uh, Library of Science. And this is my, uh, also, I'm uh, interested in citizen science because of my interests uh, uh, connected with the participation uh, in science. So, uh, so my uh, topic is to uh, make it closer to you, the, the citizen science, also about in my country, uh, in Poland, which is not in the forefront of the citizen science, but still I think it's interesting and uh, to, to that it can uh, show uh, interesting experience about this this topic for you. So now I will uh, share my screen and my presentation. So from the beginning, uh, citizen science. So producing data with people uh, for innovating research. So this is a uh, very important thing that we should understand that. Uh, uh, without uh, without without uh, people and also without data, it's impossible to to think about citizen science uh, pro uh, citizen science uh, idea and aspect. So, what's the most interesting? Uh, well, how it came that uh, such a thing as citizen science has begun? Uh, well, it was. Uh, uh, it was uh, such this concept uh, exists before uh, before uh, 2000 uh, well 21 century but before uh, it wasn't very known though but uh, then later uh, what happened well we've been uh, we are now living at the uh, time of enormous growth of scientific data and this growth will be uh, uh, growing and rising uh, during uh, next years, so this is a, this is called an era of 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 of, of, of big data. So this uh, and this uh, big data era is uh, very important to understand. Uh, that uh, why uh, well it's 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 about taking. Uh, well, everyone is is uh, taking their uh, uh, their produced data during their uh, their research, but this data uh, not only during research, during everyday life, during their uh, participation in the social networks and, uh, and other things, 
but those data are not structurized they're not analyzed so they need to be they need to be uh, so they, they need to be changed uh, some some changes during uh, this uh, aspect of 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 of, uh, of researching so uh, the let's say beginning of the so-called so -called modern uh, citizen science was back in the 2000 beginning of that uh, of the uh, now uh, now in beginning of uh, our century well uh, it was uh, good understand uh, understood uh, well it was good uh, explained by the honey from Arkel uh, at their uh, speech during the uh, TED uh, event when they when she explained her story about how they how she began involved in the citizen science so during this uh, this speech which uh, I uh, sources in here uh, in this presentation she said that well, Back in 2007, there was a couple of astronomers like Kevin Shavinsky, also mentioned here uh, with a photo. Well, they had a data set about of, of uh, thousands of pictures, uh, and oh, sorry, and uh, one of the astronomers, Kevin Shavinsky, had seen well uh, seven thousands of this uh, these photos, and then then he realized that there is not enough coffee to go like that and to analyze all this data. So uh, now, nowadays uh, in, 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 our, in, our, in, in our world, there are so many, uh, so many data because of the more better recording, recording equipment and making better photos, better, better equipment for, for, uh, for example, for astronomers. So uh, there was such an, a need for, to, to, to create a better procedures and better uh, better ways to to uh, to analyze data that uh, simply well people not professional uh, scientists they couldn't do it by themselves they need support they could also of course they could uh, do all the all the uh, all the work by themselves but it's as you, as you see it took too much time because you know people need coffee but machines don't machines could also do thousands of operations in one minute and they never got tired so they could also analyze the data about uh, about uh, cosmos but uh, they also need to be programmed and they also need to use the ai algorithm and it needs to be skilled also so uh, of course, uh, we can sure that we can be sure that machines will be able to automate data processing correctly. There are of course many types, uh, different types of data, and some uh, some need uh, some uh, still need to be uh, supported by people's work because only human data processing can prove a good quality. Uh, so, as they said. Uh, Computers, they won't, uh, they won't be able to, uh, to, to, to do everything. People still can. And that's how uh, citizen science in their say, modern form has, 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 has been uh, developed. Um, uh, so what is citizen science? And there are, of course, multiple definitions because there are multiple uh, uh, projects that, that uh, uh, speaks about uh, citizen science. From the beginning, we can say this is a participation of non-scientists in the process of gathering data uh, according to specific uh, scientific protocols and the process of using and interpreting. Uh, there are also other examples of definitions. There are also other definitions that can be found in internet and Wikipedia. Uh, and uh, personally, I do like an example uh, of, of definition that is in the green paper of citizen science. It's the, that's the general public engagement in scientific research activities when citizens contribute to science either with their intellectual effort and surrounding uh, knowledge or with their tools and resources. So participants uh, provide experimental data uh, and uh, find uh, researchers uh, raise new questions and co-create scientific culture. 
and uh, I like this. Uh, I like this uh, 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 this definition because uh, for me it's uh, the closest for the idea of citizen, of citizen science that I prefer. Uh, I prefer it because uh, uh, the the idea that comes uh, from the white paper from citizen science for Europe is the closest uh, for me. This idea includes, for example, that uh, uh, pooling for resources is also a, a good idea for, for, for making citizen science. So if we look what did uh, uh, Hanif von Arkel and Kevin Shavinsky, we see that those uh, citizen science activities was connected with data collection and, uh, uh, and analysis tasks. So these, they've seen uh, pictures of, of space, uh, they see uh, objects in the space, so and, and then, then uh, they they analyze them and they see what uh, how can they uh, uh, how it can be uh, uh, described. So, but there are also other uh, models of uh, of citizen engagement in science. For example, pooling uh, of resources, and this is an, for example I, an, an an idea of connecting personal computers in one network. To increase cal calculation power means uh, distributed computing, which is also a very powerful uh, uh, way to uh, to uh, to uh, to be engaged in in, in scientific uh, uh, projects. And examples like folding at home project is is very knowable. Uh, as you may, uh, I don't know if you've heard about, but it's. Uh, and and uh, and very powerful projects that helps you uh, that helps uh, scientists to find cures for different uh, for different uh, diseases. There are of course serious games, for example, iWire and other, uh, or or for example, stall catchers, other uh, uh, and other uh, games that use. Uh, uh, that there, there are scientific projects that use techniques of gamification to increase participation, and also other uh, other, uh, uh, for example, grassroots activities. That uh, is an example of when citizens are grouping together to make research under the scientific methodology, and they, of course, may be made. Uh, they may be uh, under the supervision of, uh, of, of of scientists, but they also can do uh, their research in uh, independently. So, of course, there are other types of classification of citizen science. We can find those uh, classification at Moodle courses of uh, at the EU Citizen Science uh, website, which I will at the uh, I will, later I will uh, show. And this is uh, in, in in for example in in uh, and course citizen science uh, typologies. So, but why why we should uh, look at the stars to find uh, you no know, place and an enormous object to to research? Why we can see that uh, this uh, let's say this place uh, that is still unexplored is so far away? We can see it very close to us, and it is uh, we are sometimes we are even neighbors of this these objects. Mm. So, ocean. Ocean covers more than 70% of, of, of percent of our planet's surface. Uh, most life on Earth is life in the water, which we don't know how much it is. Uh, according to World Maritime Species Registry, there are no well, thousands, thousands of maritime species that we already know, but it's probably only a smart part of general number of maritime biodiversity. Well, ocean has tremendous impact, not only at the life on Earth, on, 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 on continents, but again, generally for the whole climate and uh, how it is, uh, how our life uh, is being developed uh, on Earth. And ocean is in, in vast majority, majority uh, still at terra incognita. We don't know much about ocean. Uh, we do research about ocean, but it's still 
something that we uh, in most, most parts we don't know much about them. And in this case, when we don't know much and we need to, uh, uh, when we are talking about such an enormous object that is so, so great, we, we wish this is a good idea to find, uh, to, to, to think that um, not only professional scientists can uh, participate in such a research, but they also need help uh, of um, every 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 people that is interesting to help in 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 in, uh, in science. They need the help of citizen scientists. In Poland, in Poland, there are some uh, institutions that uh, are pioneers of of citizen science, and uh, this is uh, very important that. Uh, uh, those pioneers are uh, from the region that I uh, that I live in, Pomorskie region in Gdańsk. Uh, uh, so, uh, one of this uh, this pioneer of of of, of uh, citizen science in Poland is um, maritime institution, for example, Institute of Oceanology uh, of Polish Academy of Sciences. They started. Uh, uh, their research uh, together with with citizen scientists, with normal people, uh, back in two thousand eight when they started to make uh, bioblitz. Uh, 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 let's say uh, bioblitz is um, uh, one of the example of of uh, citizen science project that uh, that uh, so it's about finding uh, so many species, uh, uh, different species on the land uh, that is possible uh, for in, in, in quick time, for example, one, one, uh, one day, uh, which also is, is used uh, as a met method of, of, of research in, uh, in different, uh, in different uh, uh, sciences like, like biology. Uh, and I want to, uh, to, 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 to to put on a special impact on those projects that they are connected, especially with the with the uh, with the sea and uh, sea research. And so uh, these are their main uh, uh, website when they uh, when they uh, show the all as the the all projects. It's in Poland. It's, it's, it's in it's in Polish language, but of course, uh, I can uh, just show uh, uh, what what uh, what were what was the projects that they did for many of years. For example, one of the projects was in science near the sea, uh, and in this project, there there was the, because there always have to be a research question. And in this aspect, there was a research question. Uh, where are uh, the habitats of rare, of rare uh, maritime species uh, macrophytes in Baltic Sea? So uh, example of this rare species is, is, uh, is seen uh, out of these photos. Uh, for example, this is rack, this is uh, lumbricalis, this is seagrass, this is a uh, uh, typically, uh, the, the rare, rare species that we see uh, that we can't see, uh, and uh, and it uh, uh, there are there are rare, and uh, definitely they need uh, our support uh, to to uh, and uh, and protection. So uh, the methodology was uh, to show uh, to, to find if those uh, if those species. Uh, was uh, close uh, to the uh, to the uh, uh, to the uh, coastline, and uh, the method was to observation uh, uh, of what kind of marine of marine of marine species are being thrown on the coast. So this method will help to assess uh, whether uh, there is a strength of ocean current, where are habitats of rare species, and in which directions those species are going if they are decreasing in, not, in, in numbers or increasing so uh, important it gives some important information about uh, if the climate of the sea is changing if the, if the sea is raising temperature uh, so 
everything this can be shown by on the on the beach if there are some uh, examples of the maritime uh, species that are thrown to the sea from the sea to the to the beach then uh, it is possible to to find it so uh, if if we see this scheme uh, how it looks like it is quite understandable that uh, it's clearly visible that collecting data in season science can be a long term process uh, and uh, it's quite harsh to collect and and to find all the examples of of, of this uh, of this species uh, because it's uh, hard work uh, to, to 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 see all the uh, these examples on on the beach so it's 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 very important to, to know that this is not a easy task for the for the sign uh, for the citizen scientists for the people that want to help in, in research uh, another uh, example of the project is about plastic. It's, an, of course, an, uh, a known threat in Baltic Sea, uh, which is very harmful for the, uh, for the uh, marine uh, ecosystems and for marine species. And the research question in this project was uh, how much of this kind of plastic uh, is uh, uh, in the Baltic Sea coastline? So. Of course, uh, to, to to analyze all these aspects, uh, some kind of special special data protocols need to be created. And an example of this data protocol is here when it is uh, shown that where, where exactly what's the date and what's the hour of this uh, observation, uh, what's uh, what what uh, kind what kind of of uh, of what's the name uh, of this uh, of uh, what's the name of the uh, of the town when uh, the, those those uh, plastic uh, examples of litter are collected? What kind of the of 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 litter is it? Is it bottles? If there are uh other as if there are other uh, aspects uh, or other uh, examples of litter and what kind of of place of the of the beach is it so everything was need to be uh, collected in 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 special uh data protocols uh, that need later to be to be analyzed and and aggregated to 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 one data set as I said, uh, collecting data uh, in in uh, in uh, collecting data in uh, uh, citizen science may not be very easy and may not be an easy task, but there are of course uh, advantages of, of citizen science. For example, those projects can be uh, very good for uh, educational purposes. They can teach. Uh, children in schools and teachers of course also uh, what's uh, how to how to do science how it is uh, done uh, uh, because it's very important also to not only to collect data but also to show people uh, what is science and how this looks like in practice for example in another project made by uh, uh, Institute of Oceanology uh, of, 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 of uh, Polish Academy of Sciences and project Hidden Water. Well, uh, it was about to, to find uh, uh, what kind of water is, is still uh, hidden in, under the ground. We are aware, of course, of water wood. It is uh, in soil, it is in, 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 in lakes, in our lakes, in, uh, in, in uh, water is also uh, floating uh, uh, in, in rivers, but also in, in forests, in puddles. So, so in many places we can find uh, simply uh, water on the surface. But uh, it's it's also very important to know how to uh, to, to understand where it comes from. Uh, what's the, the very and, and also it's about methodology because. Uh, a citizen science also can teach uh, people that they uh, should act on instructions and strict instructions how to collect data. Uh, one of this collect data me method is litter bag method uh, uh, that can be also you find in the internet. Uh, that's it's a special methodology that helps people to to 
to uh, to uh, uh, to understand uh, the uh, idea of, of uh, what kind of microorganisms are hidden in the water. And also cloudiness of water can be measured with a tube. So, uh, so these are examples how it, uh, how, uh, how this, uh, how the different, how the special methodology are, uh, are made by the uh, people. And this is uh, also very important because uh, in citizen science, uh, there are also, uh, there are, I heard many times in, uh, some kind of uh, argument that citizen science is not good because uh, the quality of measurements and quality of data analysis uh, made by people that are not professional scientists are not good uh, and uh, uh, it can be considered as such, such a thing uh, as, as a good uh, example of, of, of data measurements, for example. But on the other hand, uh, scientists that are close to the, uh, the, the enthusiasts of citizen science uh, uh, methodology and uh, the, the, this trend, they argue that uh, that is not true. The uh, citizen scientists, they are very good and uh, in, in collecting data because they are very uh, uh, that they are very uh, uh, proud of their work, that they, they can do something for the science and they really uh, do it uh, very good. As I said, uh, describing methodology, it's, it's always every aspect, uh, every uh, citizen science project is based on some kind of assumptions made in the special, uh, in special uh, scientific papers. Examples of the scientific papers uh, are uh, here uh, mentioned, and uh, and we need to know that uh, that uh, that uh, collecting data is always uh, um, this is only a small part of some kind of, of, of bigger of bigger uh, of bigger uh, uh, only small part of bigger uh, bigger idea a uh, greater idea of, of creating the whole research. Of course, we can also say that there are other internet, but maybe I will uh, show it later to you. So, Institute of, of Oceanology of Polish Academy Sciences, those uh, late, uh, earlier I've, I've shown you uh, examples of, of projects that have been made uh, uh, some years ago. Now they are uh, still collaborating and making citizen science projects. They continue collecting information about uh, plastic waste with primary schools and uh, uh, and, and uh, museums science experiment. As, uh, it's a science center experiment in Gdynia. This is a museum in in Gdynia that uh, that also educate uh, people, uh, especially uh, young people, that uh, how they can uh, help uh, in science. They also are searching noodles. Nurdles, it's not a new, uh, let's say, uh, sm uh, s uh, name of the of the of the species of uh, of the species uh, um, of some kind of mammal. It's just uh, a problem that uh, uh, plastic uh, that uh, are in our uh, that is in our sea and or in our ocean. It's not always in the form of the bottles as we've seen. This is in form mostly in the form of small plastic pieces, noodles. That is very that that is very uh, very uh, dangerous for the uh, for the uh, marine species like fishes and other uh, because they, they suffer from from these noodles that came came to, to the organism and they they simply die. It's very it's very it's a great problem in, in the whole ocean. And of course, they also cooperate with yachtsmen in researching and plankton. And of course, they educate about the ocean. And this is not the only one, only institution that is making citizen science in our Pomorski region. Another maritime institution involved in citizen science is uh, National Research Institute, uh, uh, National Marine uh, Fisheries Research Institute. 
that uh, is that their research are mainly uh, uh, concerned with uh, connected with the uh, with the uh, cooperation with special special uh, uh, job uh, occupation and uh, with the fishermen. This is also an example of citizen science uh, and their how they cooperate with people that are uh, doing their everyday uh, work at the, the small boats uh, by, uh, by and uh, but this is a different type because uh, not uh, because only in, in some cases only this the, this particular uh, occupation uh, only they can help so on this fishery boats like like this one shown on the photos the video monitoring is being uh, installed for uh, for an uh, observation purposes. Mm. And this uh, and what's the aim of the of the of this? Uh, what's the purpose of this uh, of this uh, research? So the problem is that uh, uh, when uh, the the, mar uh, the boat fishermen uh they're often uh they are uh, working ex extensively uh, in the uh, shore of the baltic sea uh, but uh, during the work they uh, some kind of uh, marine, marine species they they can suffer from the uh, from the uh, gill net uh, uh, from the gill net from the net uh, that uh, uh, that uh, that some kind of mammals uh, can can can, uh, can 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 go in, uh, can be trapped by by the gill net, so it's dangerous for them. People and researchers want to know what's the uh, how how it is uh, what what's the simply uh, the what's the how how problematic is this? So fisher of course needs to be sustainable to save that biodiversity. And some bird species are also trapped in fishing nets. So, without support of coastal fishermen, collecting data would be very, very hard. It would be quite uh, almost impossible. So, an idea uh, is that uh, they can uh, video monitoring. Uh, they can collect data from their everyday work to help them uh, to to make, let's say, also their work. Uh, acceptable for the for for the environment and also environment to, to not not to suffer because of the of the everyday uh, uh, fisheries so in this aspect it's need to be said that challenges in a small uh, well challenges uh, uh, citizen science uh, projects can be challenging in many aspects for example uh, in this case, uh, it needs cooperation with a special uh, with special occupation with uh, fishermen, and those challenges uh, can be uh, important because it's not so easy to create an, uh, a citizen science project that can be uh, acceptable for everyone. Uh, Ilya, uh, uh, examples that I've shown before. That was examples for the uh, uh, for the uh, school uh, teachers and school pupils that are uh, able to uh, to do the uh, the research uh, without any problem. They are uh, happy to to help the the science. In this uh, in this case, uh, some other uh, let's say interests of this occupation group need to be uh, need to be considered. For example that uh, that it's difficult to work uh, uh, together with this uh, on on such a, on such a boats uh, it's difficult to uh, to find a lack uh, enough space for observer it's not sometimes it's not possible to find a space for camera and of course there can be a say potential control let's say control because uh, of observation by a fisherman because maybe there are some aspects that they don't want to to uh, to show to the researchers so uh, during during uh, creating and designing uh, 
citizen science project, it needs to be considered. So examples of those uh, two previous institutions may arise a question, what makes a citizen science, uh, what, what makes a science project a citizen science project? So definitely citizen science project needs to have two uh, attributes. First, a scientific problem to solve, and then include, it includes support of people, uh, for example, data collection or data analysis. So, uh, so, so simply, uh, uh, this is, these are two aspects or attributes that need to be together. Uh, and uh, as I said, maritime research, these examples of maritime research needs some countable small pieces of this research to understand the general concept, how ocean works. So citizen science has also a significant, significant educational importance, as I said before. And it needs to be based on such an, uh, let's say, uh, good foundations. Uh, uh, these foundations in this case would be an open research data. So this is also an uh, aspect of the open uh, science that need to be included in this uh, case. So uh, data sets need to be on open licenses, which can be uh, revised, remixed, distributed, and, and so on. Uh, because without this, uh, it can be used by citizen scientists to, 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 uh, to change them, to analyze them. So people in citizen science work on uh, pieces of data, analyzing photographs, signals, uh, assessing places of malfunctions, assessing photos in the social science. So, uh, they work on data and how, and they also learn how to understand it, uh, uh, to understand. But of course, as I said, uh, those data need to be open research data. And this comes to the very important aspect, what brings uh, citizen science. It also brings um, data literacy, so an ability to read, understand, and create uh, and communicate uh, data as information. So uh, data literacy is uh, very important for people nowadays to uh, understand, you know, the, the schemes, the, the, the uh, sheets, Excel sheets, and what is uh, in there. So uh, as I said, nowadays information can be, uh, can be hidden in calculation sheets, in podcasts, in recordings, in code lines. So it needs special uh, skills and equipment to understand and reuse this data. We can improve our data literacy by special programs and knowledge in, in Excel on R or fight or other uh, uh, on other uh, uh, or on other uh, languages of programming. But of course, it's not very uh, easy to to learn them. We can also develop our data literacy uh, and during the hubs and uh, like in citizen science uh, projects like uh, uh, Zooniverse or EU citizen science, which I will, I guess soon I will also show you. And of course, these are aspects of data literacy, which is also an important to know that it's not also about, it's, it's not always about data comprehension, but also about, it helps people to understand what's the data location how to interpret data. So citizen science can definitely be related to data, uh, to data literacy. And also citizen science theorists, theorists are making relations bet, uh, between these two aspects. It is being analyzed in scientific articles as we can see uh, in, this, in, in, in this slide. And of course, we can say that oh, ocean literacy, uh, well, it comes, I guess this idea of, of this term ocean literacy comes from the uh, term uh, data literacy. And with their main principles that we can see that, well, we still don't know much about ocean. And there is, uh, and only by, it is very important, only by citizen scientists, we can explore how much we need to know about ocean on, on this uh, great object. And at the, at the end, I just want to say a few words about interesting websites about citizen science. If you are 
think about developing your own citizen science projects, I could recommend this universe with their uh, special uh, uh, sheet when they explain how to develop citizen science projects. Uh, if we want to see how citizen science can be institutional, institutionalized, I can recommend an uh, citizen science uh, center at the Southern Denmark, uh, Southern Denmark University, uh, which uh, is an example of a good practice of how it, uh, how uh, citizen science can be can be developed. So, uh, if you want to know more about newest academic research in this field of citizen science, I can recommend uh, your um, uh, special uh, scientific journal, Theory and Practice which shows uh, only uh, research and academic papers connected with citizen science. Of course, you can find uh, uh, articles about this uh, aspect in different, uh, in other, in other uh, journals, but this is, uh, but uh, this, uh, this journal special, this is uh, focused only on citizen science. And of course, if you want to know more about citizen science, how it is developed internationally, you can uh, you can find in, uh, European Citizen Science Association Network (EXA) together with uh, their let's say some kind of constitution for the citizen science, ten principles of citizen science. So there, are of course. So thank you. I, I think that I've already uh, I've took. Uh, much time so i just wanted to say uh, thank you and start of course another uh, uh, webinar soon uh, uh, by the uh, also by the eu plus uh, and and that's that's one of what i wanted to show you i hope it was okay and uh, uh, and now i can turn my my voice to the much more experienced uh, 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 much more experienced uh, scholar that uh, can, I guess, tell you much more about how to develop a citizen science project, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Romain Juliard. Thank you. And of course, I'm stopping. My... Thank you very much, Simon. Uh, so I will uh, go on with my own presentation uh, following yours. Uh, so you show, I think, very convincingly uh, how uh, citizen science can uh, contribute to research and uh, the great potential there is. Uh, I want to show uh, some uh, recent uh, uh, projects I've been involved in, three, three of them. Uh, and uh, I'm working at uh, Sorbonne University and, uh, and the next door uh, also Museum of Natural, uh, National History. And uh, what I want to talk about is uh, not big data and uh, artificial intelligence, but how citizen science is uh, also contributing quality data, uh, mobilizing uh, the collective intelligence. And uh, that uh, will be uh, really what I want to, to show you this afternoon. Uh, through example, one, uh, one of them is a, a citizen science project who have been assisting uh, called uh, Mission Irison. Uh, Irison is a hedgehog. Uh, the French for hedgehogs, and uh, the, the principle, the protocol here is to uh, to, to to understand what is the habits of these uh, lovely species in uh, gardens, in private gardens, in uh, in uh, suburban habitat, and in, uh, in a wider countryside, um, based on a tunnel uh, trap uh, recording footprints. So you have to uh, set up your tunnel, uh, prepare your hink. Uh, handmade ink and then you uh, set up this in your garden for uh, five consecutive nights and every uh, morning you come and collect um, two sheets of paper that are at the entrance of the tunnel so here is a handmade tunnel you're, you're also uh, allowed to, to, to build one with standard size uh, measure and so you that, um, all the animals that went uh, through the tunnel on, on, during the night will leave uh, footprints and tell a story, a hink uh, printed story that you have to decipher uh, 
indeed, you have to identify which uh, animal, which species uh, have been through your tunnel over the night and uh, identify it and share it uh, with other participants. Here you have a, a view of um, participation, um, a typical participation where uh, and the numbers you see is the ongoing validation process by uh, other participants. And uh, here is one of the interesting things that is occurring is that participants are really the experts of the data they are collecting and very quickly they know much more about the data and uh, the, the quality of the data and what's in the data than uh, any other uh, non-participants and so um, organizing the, the validation process through that is very uh, efficient uh, in a, really a few hours you will have all your identification uh, uh, validated or you may receive suggestions if uh, they, you have a better ID. And eventually, uh, and possibly, if you, as a participant, you see other species that were uh, likely to have been through the, through the tunnel that night, you may uh, uh, add a new data on the, the participation data. So uh, some complex uh, and structured data are uh, produced also through that. One thing you may notice is that uh, it's quite an um, engaging process to collect a, a single data since you have to build up this tunnel, prepare your ink, install it uh, very carefully in your garden, collect it uh, every morning for five nights. So uh, that's very engaging and, and nevertheless, the number of participants and the number of uh, data that's produced is quite large. It's a two years old pro project now and you have, uh, you see, uh, 100 and uh, 1,500 active participants, about 10 times more that are uh, only registered to the newsletter and follow um, what's going on on the websites. And uh, quite a few data are, that are collected. And in this kind of, of projects, you don't have a, a super uh, a big uh, producer of data. Uh, you're not able, able to produce a large amount of data it is, since the time you're, you're and so the, the share of uh, production of data is very balanced among participants. Most participants will produce between one and 10 data. Uh, and uh, it's something like that. So one, one of the, the lessons uh, here I want to share with you the, this afternoon is that this very engaging uh, protocol and project actually uh, found is uh, the, the, its network of participants that are also very engaged. And, and, and there is uh, a kind of correlation, or at least not a negative correlation, between uh, the, the, the quality of the data and the, uh, the difficulty uh, of, of what is asked and the participants' engagement. And possibly we, we think that uh, citizen science is not necessarily something uh, simple uh, to, uh, to, to, to find uh, to be a successful project. And that's echo to uh, one uh, quite famous uh, study by a psychologist who study uh, video gamers and, um, and find and uh, try to understand why, how such gamers could spend hours uh, playing. And he, he, he defined the, the concept of optimal experience, which is when you uh, through a video game offer a challenge that match your skills. If it's too uh, easy, uh, then you don't participate because it's boring. If it's too difficult, you get anxious and you're not participate. And I think, really think that uh, citizen science should find this optimal experience and propose this optimal experience to, uh, to participants to, to reach the, this success. So it's possible and I think it's even uh, a kind of uh, target to collect this kind of structured data. And we had uh, very good ex uh, examples uh, in the previous uh, presentation. And that's open a, a range of possibilities to go for this uh, structured data. And uh, in particular, to combine um, observation skills, uh, what as a human you are able to uh, record, to see, to hear, to count, to uh, follow guidelines. But this observation or 
very often uh, completed by uh, what you know as uh, an individual with your own experience, uh, your intention, uh, your local knowledge about what's going on. And uh, very often, a citizen science project will uh, target these uh, unreached observations where there is a mixture between uh, what you can record and what's uh, your own uh, experience, this kind of uh, ordinary experience that uh, is otherwise difficult to, uh, to, to, to take. I, I'll give an example of that uh, in a few, uh, in a few minutes, couple of minutes. The second lessons uh, from our experience, and I already uh, alluded to in the Hedgehog's example, is all what is going on uh, um, on the, the platform uh, as social interaction among participants. Here is a one of screenshot of uh, 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 one of the oldest projects on the pollinating insects. You have to collect a collection of pictures of all the species that you are able to picture during 20 minutes on a flowering plant species. And uh, there is all this validation process, but also um, a lot of comments and exchange among the, the, the participants. And they, they tend to know each other and exchange a lot of information through these comments about uh, what they did, about the quality of the, the, their data, how they, uh, they were able to follow the, the guidelines. And, um, and we discover that uh, so much was um, going on through this social interaction, that, that was one of the key to a successful uh, citizen science project. And we really uh, think we are entering in the era of uh, uh, citizen science 2.0. Uh, that's an allusion to the web 2.0 when it become social. Uh, that is maximizing the, uh, the good uh, things that are occurring through this uh, social interaction. So there, there is a lot of things such as imitation, homogenization, uh, uh, emulation among participants. They may uh, help each other, uh, give advice, but there is also all this quality control that may be organized through validation, but uh, also uh, through, um, through some kind of uh, uh, social control on the, on the quality of the data because uh, they become very uh, eager to uh, respect the common good that is uh, produced by this citizen science data. Um, and all this is also a strong motivation to participants because you develop one of the key uh, motor, the key uh, driver of participation or, or, or the long lasting participation, with, which is a sense of belonging. Um, and so all this uh, may be organized to maximize the, uh, the quality and the added value of uh, data collected through citizen science. So let me uh, go now to a very recent uh, uh, project that will be launched uh, next week in, uh, in, in Germany and is uh, called Changing Nature and is developed uh, together with the Museum of Natural uh, for Nature Kunde in Berlin and the uh, Paris Museum of Nature. And uh, so it has different name in different language, but uh, the basis is that um, we suffer individually, collectively, as what is called environmental amnesia, uh, which is that uh, our reference of what is the good state of nature is uh, our, what we th uh, our memory from our childhood. And we lost what nature, uh, we forget what nature was before that, uh, both individually, but also collectively. There is no, uh, uh, this kind of, um, we, we, this, this amnesia collecting. But every once in a while, uh, individually, we come across uh, by our uh, readings, uh, going through our uh, personal archive, uh, grandmother diary, whatever, uh, documents, texts, uh, objects from the past that surprises us today uh, on what it tells about the past, about the state of nature in the past. And the goal of this project is to make uh, research a participatory a collection uh, for research out of this. Uh, this kind of documents may be very uh, diverse. It may be uh, pictures from uh, grandmother's uh, holidays, uh, objects. Uh, it can be uh, through readings, uh, whatever. It has to come from the past, 
and to uh, surprises uh, you and that you're uh, willing to share both the documents and your surprise. So every document that is uh, will be uh, on this um, in, in this collection will be associated with uh, your story. What it's this uh, object documents telling you about the state of nature? Why do you want to share it? What's uh, the surprising thing about it? And uh, what it tells you about the change in nature uh, from when the document was produced and uh, nowadays. So the the document or the the object is a, is, a, is, a, is usually a picture or a video or a sound, but uh, it's uh, digitalized and uh, upload on the website and describe uh, with different uh, met metadata categories that helps to uh, search into the, the database uh, then and together with the story and uh, some uh, emotions and things like that. Uh, so that would be the, the, the home page, uh, it's the projected home page, it will be released I said, next week, so it's a very uh, um, ongoing work. Uh, this uh, project is uh, in three languages and uh, we will use uh, Deepal as, uh, to uh, translate automatically um, all texts that are produced by uh, the, the participants. Uh, the story, but also the, the comments and uh, exchanges, and uh, so that participants can uh, interact uh, among themselves, even if they are not speaking the, the same uh, the same language. And um, and the participation is uh, how you look for these documents. Uh, there may be uh, in the in the future some missions or something like that to. Uh, so that's the, you organize and look for a particular type of document, such as uh, recipes or a particular place or whatever, or hedgehogs documents on hedgehogs in the past, whatever. And uh, also checking each other's contribution, and you may add your own uh, story on the, on the document. So that was a, that's a quite innovative way to uh, develop citizen science and ambitions. And the, the last example I want to describe is a work in progress also. Uh, it's not launched yet. It's, it's a plan for the, the autumn. And it's uh, uh, how to um, apply this kind of citizen science in health research, um, where there is a big issue about uh, sharing data. Uh, you know that uh, these health data are sensitive and you're not allowed to, uh, to, to put them uh, everywhere. And usually uh, when you uh, ask people to participate in producing data and in health research, you have uh, mostly court surveys based on some kind of uh, forms and with little interactions uh, with the participants who want to, 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 to keep all the data uh, uh, safe and uh, in many times you have uh, online forums for participants or for uh, and in particular when they have their uh, kind of disease uh, and they want to share things among them uh, and they use uh, online social networks and that's uh, two concerns one is that uh, it's difficult to uh, get data out of this uh, appropriate data out of the social network, even though there is a lot of interesting things going on. And also that these forums are not secured and uh, that we are not. Uh... So we first uh, think about how to uh, uh, securize in a way uh, the sharing of, of, uh, of data among participants uh, of health data. And, and one solution we have is to have very different systems, uh, one holding all the personal um, data and so that only uh, shared uh, data are in the other database and that the link between the two is um, is done through uh, individual logging and password that are given by the medical authority to uh, future participants uh, in a secure way such as giving them in, in hand 
and to so that the participants register in the citizen science platform without telling anything about themselves. So that's there's uh, a really uh, at, and, 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 and through that we are, are able to develop secured social network, which is has a great potential uh, for many uh, many uh, social uh, issues uh, where you want to uh, secure exchanges, but exchanges also cannot be entirely uh, secured. Uh, so the application we are working on is uh, with an uh, NGO working in Africa, uh, in Mali, uh, about the diabetes, uh, and uh, it's a new uh, emerging disease there, as uh, in many places in, uh, in Africa, in the South country. And uh, the, the, the object, uh, the, the project is to develop and share structured data about uh, the relationships between food, sports, uh, physical activities and uh, treatments and symptoms about around diabetes. So we are um, we will work uh, this. We'll do this experiment with uh, this citizen science experiment. Really, where does it work with uh, young uh, having uh, type one diabetes? So they um, which are uh, already registered, uh, which uh, um, facilitates the access to uh, this secure platform. So the, what we are uh, really thinking is uh, why uh, really uh, the motivation to participate to such a project, which will, uh, to our sense, is to uh, better uh, understand uh, why my, my, myself as a, as a, 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 a diabetic uh, young uh, adult. Um, so hello, participant to store. The story of their day every day is another experiment, how I will uh, deal with uh, my food, my physical activities, how I feel and so on. So uh, uh, really the, the, the citizen science project is and the protocol is uh, think uh, through the motivation of the participants and it's I want to learn about myself, I want to store this data for uh, later uh, for the future uh, to, to better understand and I want maybe to, to store uh, special uh, events. Uh, the second, why, second reflection is why sharing data. Um, so one, one thing is to uh, um, look at uh, the usual uh, uh, social network that these young people are using and why they are, they are using it, what kind of, how they are using it. And also allowing to um, ask questions to other participants about uh, their symptoms like uh, why do I feel lonely? Why, uh, why do uh, I have uh, uh, I'm tired or whatever? The, all, all the ordinary uh, life. What does it mean living with uh, diabetes in Africa? Uh, any acute health issues uh, detected through this platform will be uh, addressed uh, to a um, healthcare professional but not on the platform. It's not a, a platform for the, the relationship between uh, a professional healthcare and his, um, and his or her patients, but uh, really for uh, interaction among participants. Yet, all these data are, uh, must be uh, useful for research. It, it's, it's a citizen science project. And uh, one of the, the criteria is that we're working with uh, professional healthcare to design the project also, because we're also working with young uh, potential participants um, and that they are eventually interested in the data. So currently uh, it looks the, the, like that. When the elementary data, sorry, it's in French, is a picture uh, which is uh, as uh, some categories and annotation uh, and it can, all, all this can be also uh, uh, through uh, um, voice uh, re recording, not, not necessarily Brighton. And so it may be shared like in Instagram uh, uh, data, but it's uh, on the private uh, website. It can be stored in uh, this uh, story of my day, uh, structured data, and it can be uh, the support of uh, context contextualized questions with uh, specific um, uh, sub community uh, if the, the topic is um, not uh, for every uh, participant, such as uh, um, yeah, my sexual life or whatever, uh, uh, living 
with diabetes and uh, only uh, for uh, boys or girls or whatever. And uh, so on the decision of the on, of the, the project earlier. So so that's it uh, for the moment. Uh, as I know, it's a working working progress. It's just to show you uh, the potential of uh, citizen science type of uh, of methods to produce data. And all this is uh, that's a kind of uh, advertisement. It's a uh, uh, produced by uh, Mosaic, which is a competence center from uh, the Sorbonne University, and uh, which is really uh, devoted to uh, help uh, researchers to uh, to develop their own project. And it's uh, quite recent; we are two years and half old. And uh, but with some success, as you have seen, we have several projects. It's two about uh, out of. Uh, uh, 15 uh, projects uh, that I've shown you that are uh, three uh, with the uh, hedgehogs project and uh, one of the, the particularities that uh, we have a full uh, web team that uh, so all every website is designed uh, and um, and personalized and uh, developed uh, with our uh, uh, in-house so that we uh, capitalize on uh, one project after the other. And uh, of course, if I told uh, you about that, is that it's open to collaboration with uh, whoever uh, wants to, uh, this kind of assistance uh, throughout Europe, and especially for EU plus community. So many thanks for your attention. Hope you find interest in our presentations and um, Thank you, uh, Roma. Yeah. Uh, I think we have a, a question uh, from Eva. Please, you can uh, turn off your, your micro, uh, Eva. Uh, hello, uh, no question, just thank you very much. It was really very interesting. I'm from Sorbonne University also, so very happy to, to know that uh, Mosaic and, uh, and interesting projects exist. So thank you very much. Or, or perhaps one question, because I have the floor. Uh, do you know if, if there are projects on language uh, topics, linguistics, or, or, or things like this already running? Mm -hmm. uh, inside the uh, Sorbonne University, I know uh, a colleague, Karen Faure, uh, that is uh, working on uh, um, having uh, developing uh, databases for uh, uh, automatic language uh, translation. Uh, so, and she's uh, documenting this database through uh, citizen science, or it's a special form of citizen science. It's a serious, uh, not serious game. It's a game with a purpose. Okay. So that's, uh, it's a kind of game where you uh, play with words and, uh, and uh, you're uh, building a database through, through that. Okay. So that's one form of uh, citizen science. Well, whenever you need data from people, uh, there is a potential uh, uh, for citizen science, I, I, I believe. That would be great. Thank you. Uh, if I can uh, add something, just wanted to say that, uh, of course, uh, citizen science projects in different uh, scientific topics uh, in different uh, uh, in different disciplines uh, can be seen and can be found at uh, some some pubs of, of citizen science, and the biggest are, as I as I seen, uh, uh, I've mentioned it, uh, Zooniverse zooniverse.org and also a uh, size starter uh, the well, uh, sky starter and or uh, dot org i can later maybe i, I can later uh, put it on the chat i don't see question uh, in the chat right now but you, you can uh, raise your hand and uh, turn on your your microphone if you uh, if you want um perhaps i i, uh, I have one question <laughs> is any of the the data of these projects are are, are shared in the data repositories or um so I'm data librarian, so <laughs> interesting about uh, uh, sharing of, uh, of these uh, types uh, of data. So for uh, biodiversity data, there is a uh, um, depository such as uh, the JBIF uh, and the, the French version uh, that is uh, collecting that. One of the issues is to keep the structure of the data when you uh, 
when you have this kind of de depository uh, and uh, and so that's uh, and so when 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 it's um, structured uh, then the other issue is to have a uh, interoperability among the data sets so uh, um, it's that there's no uh, necessarily a uh, general answer to this question <laughs> um, yeah I don't see other questions, so perhaps uh, just to just uh, just check uh, the chat box, but I, I think we don't have uh, more questions. So <laughs> thanks uh, a lot uh, uh, to, to both of you for, for the presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the presentation will be deposited on the Nodo. The video will be de uh, on the website, uh, on the For You Plus website. So we, we will send you uh, the links uh, once we, we will um, deposit uh, all the materials. So thanks. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Simon. And thank you very much, uh, Romain. Thank you, Cecil, and thank you to the audience. <laughs> yeah, and if you have any questions, uh, just uh, contact us by email, and uh, we'll be pleased to answer, I'm sure. Of course, that's right. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. Bye.